Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Shivangi Mishra. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you. Set own house in order, India tells Pakistan after it raises Kashmir issue at SIGA summit. Rainfall and governments neglect leave Pakistan's Karachi in shambles. And Nepal cricketer Sandeep Lamichane's remand extended for five more days in rape case. And now for all the details. India on Thursday slammed Pakistan for raising the Kashmir issue at the regional Sikha summit in Kazakhstan and said it should rather turn an eye towards persecution of minorities within its own territories. Calling Pakistan a global epicenter of terrorism, Lakey urged the country to shut down its terror infrastructure. India's junior foreign minister Minakshi Lekhi on Thursday slammed Pakistan for raising the Kashmir issue. At the Conference on Interaction and Confidence Building Measures in Asia, the Sikha summit in Kazakhstan, and said it has no local standi to comment on its Jammu and Kashmir territory. Lekhi said it is unfortunate that Islamabad has used the Sikha platform to propagate false and malicious propaganda against India while turning a blind eye towards persecution of minorities within its own territories. Calling Pakistan a global epicenter of terrorism, Lekhi urged the country to shut down terror infrastructure on its soil. Pakistan is the global epicenter of terrorism and continues to be the source of terrorist activities, including in India. Pakistan continues to make no investment in human development, but provides their resources for creating and sustaining infrastructure of terrorism. Pakistan must immediately seize anti-India cross-border terrorism and shut down its infrastructure of terrorism. The Indian minister also reiterated that the entire Union territory of Jammu and Kashmir is an integral and inalienable part of India, including the areas under Pakistan's illegal occupation, which it should vacate immediately. The Muslim-majority region of Kashmir has been at the heart of decades of hostility between India and Pakistan. India has long blamed neighbouring Pakistan of arming and infiltrating terrorists across the border to spread unrest in Kashmir Valley. Pakistan, however, denies the allegations. A panel of India's Supreme Court on Thursday delivered a split verdict on the ban on wearing of hijab in educational institutes in Karnataka state and referred the matter to the Chief Justice. Ban on the government in schools in February had sparked uproar by Muslim students and their parents in the southern state. An Indian Supreme Court panel failed on Thursday to rule on a ban on hijab in schools, referring the matter to the Chief Justice after a split decision and leaving in place the Southern Karnataka state's ruling against the scarves worn by women that sparked uproar. Ban on the garment in schools in February unleashed protests by the Muslim students and their parents in Karnataka. In response, Hindu students staged counter-protests, raising another contentious issue at a time that some Muslims have complained of marginalization under the Hindu nationalist government led by Prime Minister Narendra Modi. The ruling BJP has refuted the allegations and said the ban has no political motive. There is a split view expressed by the two honorable judges. Justice, Justice, Justice Hemant Gupta has said he has dismissed the appeals preferred by all the parties and he has upheld the order passed by the state of Karnataka. Justice Dhulia has deferred his, with his view and he has expressed that he has, he has a differing view because a girl child faces a lot of problems while they are being uh, they are being sent to the schools and colleges and and uh, right uh, and their right to f uh, education is more important than wearing or not wearing a hijab india's debate on the hijab comes as protests have rocked iran after women objected to dress codes under its islamic laws the chief justice would set up a larger bench to further consider the case 
the Supreme Court decisions apply nationwide. In news from Pakistan, reacting to the acquittal of Pakistan's Prime Minister Shehbaz Sharif and his son Hamza Shehbaz in a money laundering case, opposition PTI has termed the development a slap in the nation's face. Pakistan's former Prime Minister and opposition PTI party chief Imran Khan on Wednesday termed the acquittal of Prime Minister Shehbaz Sharif and his son Hamza Shehbaz in a Rs 16 billion money laundering case, a slap in the nation's face by the judicial system of the country. Addressing a public gathering, Khan said the acquittal had covered up the father-son duo's theft worth billions of rupees. PTI senior vice president Fawad Chaudhary said that on one hand, the government is seeking funds for flood victims. On the other hand, one family in the ruling dispensation has looted billions of rupees. Sola Arab rupiah liya tha, jis mein char inke gawa, char jo factory mein karne wale gawa the, jinhon ne paisa liya, wo mar chuke hain. Jab se ye aaye, wo mar gaye. सब हार्ट अटैक से मर गए हैं कभी पता चलवाओ कि क्या हुआ कि सारों को हार्ट अटैक हो गया बोथ द फादर सन डुओ व अक्यूज्ड ऑफ मिसयूजिंग देयर अथॉरिटी एंड फॉर द इलीगल यूज ऑफ पब्लिक फंड्स फॉर अ ड्रेन फॉर द मिल्स ऑफ व्हिच हमजा इज अ डायरेक्टर द कोर्ट्स वर्डिक्ट केम after the federal investigation agency gave a clean shit to the pm and his son arguing that the record shows that neither the amounts had ever been deposited nor withdrawn directly from their bank accounts residents of pakistan's largest city karachi have raised their concern over the dilapidated condition of roads caused by heavy torrential rains in the city they said the pakistani government has hardly made any effort to repair the potholes and broken roads while it has been amassing funds in the name of flood relief. Locals in Pakistan's Karachi city have expressed their concern over the dilapidated condition of roads in the aftermath of heavy rainfall and flooding in the city. They said the damaged roads have unsettled the whole traffic system while daily activities have been disrupted as streets in some parts are still inundated with drain and sewage water. They lamented that hardly any effort is being made by the concerned authorities to repair the potholes and broken roads. Sir, ji, two months ago, rain was there. After that, roads, road, pools, all the things were torn down. Now, the government wants that the things that are torn down, which is the most difficult thing for people, the traffic system is being affected by the traffic system. The traffic system is being affected by the traffic system. मिट्टी धूल बीमारियां पैदा हो रही हैं तो वो मत तो चाहिए इस पे थोड़ा सा काम करें वो को मत एक बार बनाती है पांच साल के लिए सो जाती है The residents blame the Pakistani government has only been amassing funds it has been receiving from foreign countries as flood relief They bemoaned the fact that Karachi the country's financial capital is fast becoming one of the least livable cities in Pakistan In news from Afghanistan the Taliban, in response to the new sanctions imposed by the United States on the members of the group, has said they do not benefit Kabul and Washington and are in violation of the Doha Agreement. The sanctions that include visa restrictions have come over Taliban's repressive policies against girls and women in Afghanistan. The Taliban reacted to the new sanctions imposed by the United States on the members of the Islamic Emirate saying that such sanctions do not benefit Kabul and Washington. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken announced on Tuesday new restrictions on the issuance of visas for the current or former Taliban members, among other individuals, believed to be responsible for or complicit in repressing women and girls in Afghanistan through restrictive policies and violence. Local media quoted Taliban spokesperson Zabiullah Mujahid saying, that the imposition of these sanctions is a violation of the Doha Agreement. He said we want these sanctions to be lifted and efforts should be made to normalize the relations between the two countries. Blinken said that despite public assurances that the ruling Taliban would respect the human rights of all Afghans, 
the group has issued and enforced a series of policies or edicts that effectively bar women and girls in Afghanistan from full participation in public life, including access to secondary education and work in most industries. No country has so far recognized the Taliban's regime in Afghanistan. The country's assets have remained frozen due to sanctions that have severely hampered banking, business and development, leading to greater insecurity, poverty and isolation. The police remand of Nepal's most high-profile cricketer Sandeep Lamichane was extended by five more days by a court in Kathmandu on Thursday to investigate the rape allegations piled against him by a teenager. The suspended cricketer captain was arrested on October 6. The Kathmandu District Court on Thursday extended former Nepal cricket captain Sandeep Lamichane's police remand by five more additional days to further investigate the rape allegations against him. The country's most high-profile cricketer Lamichane was taken into police custody upon his return to Kathmandu from Doha. He was suspended as Nepal captain last month and he left the Caribbean Premier League after being accused of raping a 17-year-old minor. Sandeep has termed the allegations as baseless and said he will fully cooperate in all stages of investigation to prove his innocence. So the investigation, uh, investigation uh, police, uh, they, uh, they requested for the seven days extension uh, for further statement and investigations. And uh, we requested the Honorable Court that seven days is too long, that uh, the one-side investigation has already been uh, completed. So we pray for the three days and uh, the justice finally gave the seven days of, uh, uh, sorry, uh, five, uh, five days of extension. So that goes until the end of the Aspen and on March 1st, he will, uh, Karthik 1st, he will be presented before the the court. Uh, possibly we let we expect that the police will come up with uh, the further detail and finalization of their investigation. The 22-year-old leg spinner was appointed as Nepal cricket team captain in 2021. He formally also captained the under-19 Nepal cricket team in 2016 during the Asia Cup. He has been the face of cricket in Nepal being the only player from the Himalayan country to feature in prominent 2020 leagues across the world. Floods and landslides have wreaked havoc in parts of Nepal and neighbouring India, claiming over 50 lives, and have displaced thousands of people in both the countries. The extreme weather pattern in South Asia has become more frequent and environmentalists have blamed it on climate change. Floods and landslides in Nepal's Bardia has claimed at least 35 lives, while 12 others remain missing, local media reports suggested on Wednesday. Several flood victims were displaced and got separated from their families owing to the floods, with around 20 people missing across eight districts. The government has deployed rescue teams, including the army and the police, to search and rescue the victims. The weather department has predicted the downpour to continue till the end of the month. Untimely October rains have brought an unprecedented hazard